Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk to you about bringing amazing design ideas to life. Many of us have amazing design ideas. We want to create, we want to innovate, we want to build amazing things in our lifetime. But as we all know, it's not always that easy. Taking a concept and turning it into reality can be an extremely, extremely challenging task. It actually takes a mega talent like Frank Gehry, one of the greatest architects of our time, to come up with such an amazing concept, sketch it up on a piece of paper, and turn it into reality. This particular example is the Walt Disney Concert Hall in LA, but there are many, many more examples. You need to sketch it up, and then the hard part begins. You need to be able to visualize it in 3D. You need to be able to communicate the concept to teams. You need to be able to walk with various teams across the globe until you end up building it. The reality is that we humans are not that good at visualizing 3D model using two-dimensional sketches. That's true for normal people. That's even true for the most sophisticated architects. That's definitely too true for their clients. Think about architecture as an example. Our architecture is fundamentally spatial, and yet the most advanced representations of 3D models are still two-dimensional. Now, given our inherent limitation, given our inability to visualize 3D model using 2D sketches, we have developed a bunch of design tools, 3D computer design tools, prototyping tools, to help us build the prototypes, to help us to build the model, to help us visualize how the models are going to look like in real life. Virtual reality, the VR technology, holds a promise to change that. In fact, when done right, virtual reality has the potential to completely revolutionize design. It has the ability to bring a model from your CAD environment with multiple people from multiple physical locations in the same virtual space. Virtual reality enables the sense of presence, and even more importantly, it enables the sense of scale that cannot be matched by any two-dimensional renderings. If this is done right, anyone, not just the Frank Gehrys of the world, should be able to visualize highly complex models as if you're standing right next to it in the real world. From concept to reality, t t taking a product from concept to reality is is a very intricate, time-consuming, expensive, to some extent risky process. I know that there is a lot more to that, but I'm going to oversimplify it here for you just to get the point across. This particular example is the automotive design. You start with a sketch. You sketch on a piece of paper and a napkin, and you quickly bring it to a CAD environment. You use computer design tools. In this particular example, you start with the surfaces of the car, then the inner components of the car. And then what you do is that you build physical models. So if you're in the automotive design, you build it out of clay. If you're in architects, you're going to build it out of balsa wood. And you're going to do a design review. You're going to decide on the changes, apply changes back to the CAD model, build new physical prototypes, keep iterating, and so on and so forth until you build the actual model. This field, the field of product design, is being constantly challenged and it's said to be disrupted. And the reason for it is the growing challenges that product designers face every day. The models are getting a lot more complex. It's a lot more expensive. It's time consuming. Time to market is becoming increasingly important. And you're working with global teams, with teams across the globe. So the promise of virtual reality is this. Instead of spending time, money, and effort to building very complicated, very time-consuming, expensive physical prototypes, you're going to take a model from your CAD environment, bring it into the virtual space, review it with multiple people from physical, different physical locations, as if the model is just next to you. You're going to communicate in real time. You're going to make changes in real time. Everything will happen in the same virtual space. Obviously, it's easier said than done. Turns out that this is extremely challenging. And this is why. If you talk to professional designers out there and you ask them why VR hasn't been integrated into you know, professional design workflow, they will tell you that the quality is just not good enough. And these are some of the challenges that need to be overcome. For one, 
the model in VR has to be detailed and accurate. The last thing that professional designers want to do is to take a model and decimate it before you bring it into a virtual reality or an augmented reality environment. You spend so much time, you create very detailed, elaborate models in your CAD design, and then you end up decimating it so it can fit within the power, the compute budget that you have in your VR or AR headset. For the most part, that's what everyone's doing today. And it can get to a point where the model so decimated that it's not that useful for professional designers. So they want the highly detailed and accurate models in the AR or VR environment. The model has to look photoreal. It has to be believable. It has to look right. Now, look at the level of fidelity, graphics quality, photorealism that can be achieved today in real-time 3D graphics relative to what's available in VR and AR. It's a big difference. This gap has to be bridged. Third one, the environment has to be interactive and dynamic. The environment has to look right, but it also has to behave right. That's the biggest advantage. That's the power of virtual reality. You can simulate behavior, not just the look. In addition to that, they want to bring multiple people in the same virtual environment, and they want to be able to interact with each other, with the model, and the environment, in the same way they interact with each other, the model, and the environment in real life. We at NVIDIA are extremely excited about immersive technologies, VR and AR, and we are doing a lot to advance the ecosystem and move this technology forward. That includes hardware, software, SDK applications. We have identified the professional design as one of the key use cases for virtual reality. And we're also aware of the challenges. That's how Project Holodeck was born, and that's how Project Holodeck evolved. And the idea here is to create a platform that takes all the latest and greatest graphics design technologies things that we have developed over the, over the years, put it into a platform, release it out there, and work with the community to identify the biggest problems and the solutions that we can provide. So we released a platform with four design principles in mind. For one, photorealistic models. We want designers to be able to take their models, bring it into VR as is. They don't need to decimate the models. We can take highly complex geometry material, bring it into a virtual reality environment. We have shown how we can take models with 60, 70, 80 million polygons and render them, render them all in real time VR at 90 frames per second at the highest resolution VR headset available out there. Physically simulated environment. The environment will not only look right, it will feel right. Physics will be implemented. The world, the virtual world, will obey to the laws of physics. Virtual team collaboration. With the current version of Holodeck, you can bring up to 14 people into the same virtual reality environment. Interactivity is implemented. People will be able to interact with each other with the model and the environment in the same way they interact with each other, the model, and the environment in real life. And obviously, artificial intelligence. It's obvious, it's clear that AI is going to be everywhere in the physical world. If that's the case, AI definitely needs to be in the virtual world. Let me play a video and show you the latest iteration of Holodeck. This particular example is the Conic Seg model. We brought it in from a CAD environment into VR, full geometry and material. Know the photorealism. This level cannot be achieved today in any VR environment. We have included a lot of annotation and collaboration tools to make the design review a lot more actionable in VR. Know the animations, the way the avatars coll collaborate with each other. Interior design cannot be done with a physical model but it can be done in VR. Every part is grabbable, every part is scalable. Know the level of detail.
You can change material, color, design, all in real time. Bring in new environments. NVIDIA Holodeck. Thank you. I touched on architecture, but I would like to elaborate on the specific use cases. I believe that when done right, architecture design is going to be a killer use case for VR. And the reason for that is simple. The most advanced 2D rendering can give you a sense of how the model is going to look like in real life. But only VR can enable the sense of scale. You know, that being said, the model complexity, along with the visual quality and fidelity required by architects, make it extremely challenging. And these are the exact challenges that we wanted to address with Holodeck. So what can be done with Holodeck in the context of architecture? First, you can bring in model from any AC app. It can be Revit, 3ds Max, Rhino, SketchUp, into Holodeck, full model, full complexity, geometry, and material. You can review the model at any scale. It can be a tabletop setting, or it can be a one-to-one -one scale. Again, doing a one-to-one -one scale review in VR is pretty powerful. Second, collaboration. Bring in multiple people into the same virtual environment. Now think, think of how powerful this can be in the context of architecture. If you work with an architect, the architect will go out of the way to create amazing 2D renderings just to give you a sense of how your new house is going to look like in the real world, in real life. But there's a limitation to this rendering. This rendering is done from a single point of view. In VR, once you're in VR, you have complete control over the virtual environment. You're not only limited to the single point of view that the architect would like you to provide. So there's the collaboration, there's the scale, and there's the simulation. In VR, you can simulate lighting. You can simulate the time of day. You can simulate acoustics. Using VR audio, we can simulate the audio propagation in the virtual space. So occlusion, diffraction, reflection, all of this can be simulated in VR, which makes it extremely, extremely powerful. But there is one more thing that we decided to include in Holodeck. Doing a design review in VR is extremely powerful. You bring multiple people in the same virtual environment, and you collaborate with people as if you're next to them in real life. But to some extent, you're isolated. Now think of it in the context of architecture, a live walkthrough. An architect would like to do a live walkthrough to a client. You cannot do it unless the client wears a headset, unless the client is with you in the same virtual reality environment. But headsets are not available in volume, and in many cases, the client doesn't want to wear a VR headset. So we wanted to bring a new capability into Holodeck. We wanted people to jump into a virtual reality environment from a phone, from a tablet, from a computer. And that's exactly what we created. We have the ability to do a video chat in VR. So we connect between people in the virtual world and people in the physical world. It's pretty mind-blowing if you think about it. It's even more mind-blowing when you try it. But essentially, you're doing a video chat with an avatar. The avatar has a camera into the physical world, and people in the physical world have a camera into the virtual world. And you talk to each other, you can collaborate, you can jump into the virtual environment from a phone, using a tablet, using a computer, using a TV in a large uh, meeting room. It makes VR a lot more accessible to many people. So this gap, this bridge between virtual world and physical world can be crossed. The design walkthrough is just one use case, and I believe that these capabilities will open an opportunity to many, many, many other use cases. So we talked about architecture, and we talked about automotive design, but there's one more use case that I would like to cover, and this particular one is simulation, or to be more specific, robotic simulation. It's very clear and evident that artificial intelligence, AI, power robots are going to be everywhere. That's the future of robotics. There is only one challenge, though. AI, power robots need to be trained. You need to build a physical prototype, and you need to train the actual robot in a physical environment. Now, what if 
we could simulate the environment for the robot. We can build a virtual robot. We can simulate the environment. Holiday can provide an environment with the highest level of visual quality and fidelity, amazing simulation tools. And the idea is that you build a robot and you train it in the virtual reality environment. And once it's trained, you deploy it on the real world. We decided to make it happen. We built the Isaac platform on top of Holodeck. And we showed at SIGGRAPH last year how we can train a robot in VR to play in a game of dominoes. So we created a virtual robot. We created the virtual environment. This particular one is a class. The robot will identify the state of the, the, state of the play and the next move in dominoes. Once the robot is trained, we actually took the AI agent, or the robot brain, deployed it in a physical robot in the actual show floor, and the robot was able to play a game of dominoes with people in the show floor. At GTC this year, we showed how we can teach a robot to make pretzels. That's very difficult. Physics simulation here is key. We were able to teach a robot to play golf. Now, all the things that I just mentioned can be done in a simulated environment. It doesn't necessarily have to be VR. But VR has another element to it. Think of robots that are going to be deployed to help disabled people at their homes. You want to be able to interact with the robot before the robot is deployed in the physical world. VR allows you to do that. So in theory, you can render an environment, a virtual robot, train the robot, jump into the virtual environment, interact with the robot before it's being deployed in the real world. So you save time, you save money. Not only that, training a robot in the physical world can be extremely dangerous. So we save that. We can do everything in VR. So I covered many different use cases. Um, I would like to encourage you all to join the Holodeck community. Our design philosophy with Holodeck is as follows. We are going to bring the latest and greatest graphics capability simulation tool into one platform. But the idea here is to work with the community. We want to give you access. We want to learn what problems you want to solve, what solutions we can provide. Actually, if we are successful with this initiative, we're not only going to solve existing problems, and we're not going to just enhance existing workflows. We're going to find new workflows, new opportunities in virtual reality. So I encourage you all to apply today, nvidia.com slash holodeck. Get access and give us your feedback. Thank you so much.